there's been obviously a lot of reports about you guys still looking to sign a right back and yep. maybe a designated player forward. Can you talk about the, where you guys are in the process and if those are, that's accurate? Yeah, it is accurate. I, uh, we are definitely looking to sign a right back and we're definitely looking to sign a forward. And I would go one step further and say we've targeted young forwards uh, and I'll go into that in a second. But we've pursued several right backs and we're being extremely selective on the type of player that we want and the, the profile of the player. So. That is in process, and we should see something come to fruition in the next seven to ten days. This is a right back player that you hope to come in and be a starting caliber or compete for a starting spot? I would say compete for a starting spot. Every player that we're looking to sign, not only does it provide competition in certain positions, but we are seeing them as potential starters. It's the same as uh, Konechny, it's the same as uh, Lucas Milano when he came back. The, these are players that are capable of starting and, and should be putting pressure on the starters. You mentioned the forward. Is it a designated player? Is it assumed that you are going to use that designated player spot on the forward, or is it still I would say it's an attacking player that can play multiple positions. I think when you look at Jeremy Abobasi and what he's done and the, the development that we've seen in Jeremy, I think one we have to give Jeremy a ton of credit for the work that he's put in, but also looking at what the club has done and what Gio has done with the player. And the fact that Jeremy is in with the national team right now is a compliment to both the player and the club. And with Jeremy in particular, we don't want to block him and his progress. So for us, it's very, very important that he's given the opportunity to continue to start, to continue to play. And if he's not, he will still get minutes. But again, I think it's healthy to provide competition. The player that we're looking at does give us depth in several positions. But if it is a young designated player and it does come to fruition, that's a player that we would expect does come in and play. With the investment that Merritt is looking to make, it would be the biggest investment that we've made in any one player since, since the, the start of the Timbers. And you're saying this young designated player would be a forward that could potentially play other attacking positions? I would say it? it's an attacking player okay. that can play in multiple positions. Okay. Are there other positions that you're still looking to target before the start of the season? No. Right back and uh, attacking player. What are some of the traits of right back? Do you see that specific? Please, what are some of those for the right back? I think something different to, to what Valentin gives us. Uh, so with Zarek, tactically he's very aware, technically he's very clean on the ball. The, the right back that we're looking at is somebody that can maybe give us a little bit more in the attacking half and especially in the attacking third and, and look to have more of an influence over the game in the attacking half of the field. Uh, I think the similar attributes to what Alvis gave us, the ability to break, the ability to get himself forward and, and a good athlete. So. It's good to have different profiles while still trying to fulfill the same need in the position. It's healthy to have a different profile, and that's what we're looking at. Yeah, we just had the end of the season. Exit interviews with you. I know that you guys are yeah. working around the clock. What benefit will it be this year to have a shorter season with the no more two leg situation and just get move around right for this thing? A shorter season over the, the, yeah. the context of the year? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, for us, it puts the season into balance when it's home and away and you play every opponent uh, on the west twice and, and the east once, but I, I think the season does have its challenges. I think the first 12 games on the road it will be a good test. It's a test of character, it's a test of ability, and the fact that Geo's had a full year with the Timbers now and being able to navigate a lot of the road trips will definitely be a benefit. We need to put ourselves in a good position that when we do come home and start the home stretch that we're, we're still in, connect, in touch with the, the leaders in, in the Western Conference. So for us, it's going to be an exciting season uh, when we open the new stadium. It's going to be phenomenal. Obviously, we have a great home support, and that's only going to get better. So we're, we're excited about that. There's some things happening in the training facility that uh, the players want to see. There's some things happening in the locker room at the stadium, apart from putting in the new site. So it, the players are excited. The coaching staff is excited. We'll get to the competition side soon. We're still going to get through preseason, and we're off to Costa Rica next week. So uh, a lot ahead of us. But just the idea that they. Shorten the season a little bit. You're not going to play in December. You're going to wrap this thing up now around Thanksgiving. I mean, that's going to be a benefit, doesn't it? it? It'll give us a longer in the off season to source the players that we need for the following season. But we're looking at uh, if the final is at the end of November, you've got the whole month of December to, to get ready for the next season. I think the coaches maybe had ten days off this season, so it's healthier as well from from their personal standpoint. But for us, the the season's only going to start to to get shorter and shorter relative to trying to squeeze in more games with. The buy, or sorry, the, the home game going to the, the higher team in the Western Conference. Obviously, it puts more importance on, on regular season results, and it's not just a matter of getting into the playoffs. You have to get into the playoffs in one of the top positions, and obviously, with our home support, that, that could mean great things, but the, every game in the season becomes a little bit more important. 
Can you talk about your thought process sort of in, in terms of the positions you decide to target this offseason, center back, uh, right back, uh, goalkeeper, and, and now an attacking player? Maybe, you know, thought winger, maybe the attacking player sort of fits into that, maybe central midfield. I'm just wondering um, from your perspective how you guys decide those are the four positions. So when you look at the goalkeeper, we have three goalkeepers currently under contract. We added a fourth, and with the fourth that we've added in that position, it's a different profile. So one, it's a little bit of an experiment. Two, it balances out the age gap that we have in the club. We have two players that are very experienced in MLS and they're on the older side. We're looking to bring in somebody, or we have brought in somebody that's 24, 25, and somebody that has international experience, somebody that may have a profile in which we can move in future years, but somebody that we believe is ready to start now but we're going to give them time to come in and prove himself. With Kendall, we still believe Kendall has a little bit of development left uh, in order to put himself in a position to compete for starting minutes. So that's the reason for the goalkeeper with the central defender. Losing Liam is going to be a loss for us in some ways. It's also an opportunity to get better. And for that, we uh, went down the road of signing an MLS central defender, somebody that had experience in the league, somebody that knows the league, somebody that's on a, a one-year contract. It's also somebody that's not going to count as a foreigner. So for us, it's a matter of balancing the roster and also the roster positions and the finances. So this was one that made sense and putting us in a position where we're not putting a stop to Cascante or Bill Tuiloma and their development and their opportunity to get minutes. So with Claude, it makes sense. It's a one-year contract because uh, we have Mabiala, who's a proven central defender, and we have Cascante and Bill, who are continuing to grow in that position. So that explains those two. And then when we start to look at the right back of it, that one makes sense. We're, we've moved Alvis and, and it was time. And now we're looking to see, can we create a, a different look to, to what we bring as a team by putting in a different profile and right back. In, and then we're looking to add an attacking player. And that attacking player should be able to play in multiple positions. So when you start to look at our depth out wide, we've got Polo, we've got Espria, we've got uh, Blanco and Marvin Loria. So those are the immediate options. And you also got Konechny that, that can balance out those positions. So. You've got Milano as well that can play out wide. So I think our depth in those positions is relatively good. Gavin, yeah, after such a great season, yeah. short season, maybe the shortest off season that you yeah. guys have ever had, what's the vibe like here with the club and how well it's gone? I, I think the first part was where it was the off season. You know, we're, we're seeing one another pretty much every day and uh, I think everyone's excited to get back to work. Uh, it, it's a great environment. We always speak about the locker room being a representation of the city and the organization. And it's something that we're very proud of. Uh, we're dealing with multiple situations where there's overseas clubs interested in our players and trying to balance that while still keeping players happy and, and continuing to move forward is always a challenge, but it's one that we're managing. And for the players, I know they're happy to be back. The staff is looking forward to getting back to work and now it's just a matter of getting ready for the season. Is what? there any concern that the short off season? No, no, for us, it, it's a matter of downtime. We have a relatively deep squad. I think what we need to manage is not only the, the short off season, but the travel and the first 12 games on the road. So that's been a constant discussion with the performance group, with Geo and the coaching staff and saying, how do we not only manage the preseason, but how do we manage the preseason relative to the schedule mm -hmm. at the start of the season? And, and that's been a, a very good conversation so far. Have you looked at the schedule and figured out what kind of record you'd like to have after 12 games? We have, and we'll keep that internal. Uh, and, and for us, it's all a matter of setting KPIs relative to games, relative to groups of games, and knowing where we need to be after the 12 games. Uh, and if we're in touch, uh, obviously you look at our points per game at home o over the last seven, eight seasons. It's relatively impressive, but we need to take care of business on the road. Last time you guys made MLS Cup, you sort of, you know, had difficulty keeping the roster together, and that impacted mm -hmm. you in the year after. Um, does maybe the TAM and maybe the changing of available money made it easier? Do you guys feel in a better position to navigate this season following an MLS Cup appearance? Drastically different. I think after we won the Cup in 2015, we had minimal TAM in which to keep the group together. And now you're up to about four million in TAM, and then you've got the additional GAM, and it's a lot, lot healthier. We're not having problems relative to the salary cap and keeping the team together. So, all the decisions that we're making are relative to the competition side of it and making the team uh, as competitive as possible and better than last season. So, we don't have the same challenges as we did going into 2016, and additionally, we don't have CONCACAF to manage. So, that was another competition we had then that we don't have now. So. I would say we're content with where the group is right now. If we get the uh, attacking player and we get the right back, then we'll, we'll be in great shape. Do you feel like you guys are were at this point able to build a team that you know 
as they're prioritizing regular season more and more, can start pushing up higher and competing for things like Supporter Shield? Uh, that, that's also always one of the goals, but uh, I think to, to take the, the quote from Gio, it is game by game. Players have to earn their positions, players have to prove themselves, and we, and we know the challenges ahead. Would this be a realistic season to say that with the first 12 games on the road, we're going to go after Supporter Shield? I, I think it's a matter of cementing where we are as a club, making sure that we're extremely competitive, making sure that we pick up points early on in the season and put ourselves in a great position, and then reevaluating that part as we go into the second half of the season. But our, our goals are lofty as a club. Every single year we put ourselves under pressure to continue to get better. And, you know, to be in two MLS Cups within such a, a short time span, I think that only fuels the hunger to get back into the MLS Cup again and, and see if we can go one step further.